My name is Meta Yord, and I'm one of two series editors for the Nordic Film Classic series, published by the University of Washington Press in Seattle and Museum Tuskelanum in Copenhagen. My co-editor for this series is Peter Schaplin at the University of Copenhagen. The small Nordic countries of Finland, Iceland, Denmark, Norway and Sweden have produced some truly remarkable cinematic works in the course of film's history. Some of these films were produced as early as the silent film era by directors such as Victor Schustrom, Maurits Stiller, Urban Gell, Benjamin Christensen and Karl Theodor Dreyer. Contemporary film classics have been produced recently by directors who have managed to meet the many challenges that accompany filmmaking in small countries. I'm thinking here of films like The Celebration by Danish Thomas Winterberg, Songs from the Second Floor by Swedish Roy Andersen, Fucking Ormol by Swedish Lukas Moodysen, Kitchen Stories by Norwegian Bent Hammer, Cool and Crazy by Norwegian Knut Erik Jensen, Nor the Albino by Icelandic Dago Kauri, and The Man Without a Past by Finnish Aki Kaurismaki, among many, many others. Through the Nordic Film Classics series, we hope to bring remarkable Nordic works to the attention of cinephiles around the world. We also hope to give these cinephiles access to the kind of information that can really deepen a spectator's appreciation and understanding of a given cinematic work. In our series, we emphasize practitioner's agency, the practice-based thinking that goes into the making of a film. Filmmaking is a complex process involving the coordination of contributions by a whole range of film professionals. We're interested in getting at the ways in which various film classics are shaped by the goals and self-understandings of the people who make them, and we're also interested in trying to shed light on these films as so many different expressions of collaborative creativity. We're also interested in understanding how the deliberations of various filmmakers interact with a certain institutional environment, with the priorities of certain production companies, for example, with film policies, and with the priorities of film institutes. Finally, we want to give thoughtful and knowledgeable authors an opportunity to spell out the reasons why the films we've selected for discussion have come to be seen as really important, as films with a lasting capacity to move us, or challenge us, or make us see the world in a different light. Because they are easily made marginal or peripheral, Small national cinemas involve all kinds of problems, but it's really important to understand that they also offer opportunities. For example, in a place like Iceland, where there are fewer than 400,000 inhabitants, film scholars are able to discuss the films that we now think of as contemporary Icelandic classics with the cinematographers, the directors, the actors and editors whose creative efforts produced them. And the same really is true throughout the Nordic region. The first three books in the series all draw on lengthy discussions of precisely this kind and on the archival materials that the film's directors made available to the authors. Ingmar Bergman's The Silence is written by Moritz Koskinen, a professor of cinema studies at the University of Stockholm and a film critic for Sweden's largest daily newspaper. Koskinen won Ingmar Bergman's trust over the years and was the first film scholar to be given access to his private papers during the last years of his life. Drawing on exchanges with the director and on his detailed notebooks, Moritz's book sheds new light on a groundbreaking and disturbing film that pushed well beyond what was acceptable to censorship boards in Sweden and the United States on account of its depiction of sexuality. Written by Icelandic film scholar Björn Norfjör, Dago Kauri's Noi the Albino explores the specific problems that Iceland faces as it pursues its filmmaking ambitions. Norfjör also shows that Noi the Albino succeeded on the international festival circuit as a film that was both distinctively Icelandic and appealingly universal. Norfjör's examination of the film integrates the broad context and history of Icelandic cinema into a close reading of Noi the Albino's themes, visual style and key scenes. The book also includes an interview with director Dago Kauri. My own book, Lorna Scherfig's Italian for Beginners, is informed by exchanges with the director, actors, cinematographer, live sound designer and editor who work together to make the film. The film is a dogma film, a film made according to the vow of chastity that Lars von Trier announced so flamboyantly in Paris in 1995. Sådan Lars von Trier på filmens 100-års fødselsdag i Paris for første gang Dogme 95 manifestet. 
som et tilbud til filmverdenen om et kunstnerisk fællesskab. For nu var det nok. In my book, I try to deepen our understanding of dogma and of filmmaking as a collaborative process by exploring the gains and losses that dogma's rules entailed for various film practitioners. The dogma rules I show involved considerable creative gains for some film practitioners, especially actors, and almost none for others. But Lorna Scherfig's Italian for Beginners is about much more than rules and creativity. It's about trying to defend what I see as an ever-shrinking space for the kinds of films that somehow deepen our moral understanding. Some critics saw Scherfig's film as mere feel-good fluff on account of the romantic happiness that six of its characters achieve in what the filmmaker calls the longest happy ending ever. I hope to have shown that Italian for Beginners is an excellent example of a kind of filmmaking that has an important contribution to make. I see Italian for Beginners as a moral feel-good film. Through its powerful and pervasive attitude of kindness towards characters who cannot or will not pursue success at all costs, Italian for Beginners encourages us to see norms of decency, friendship, community and responsibility as animating the lives of many of those ordinary people who are easily discounted by themselves and others as losers.